Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today I have Janice Osguch on the line, and she's co-founder of BNB. Janice, welcome to the show. Thank you, Adam. Thank you for having me here. All right, Janice. So uh, I'm excited to get into today's topic. So we're going to do a deep dive into VNV, which is the first fashion platform specifically for the modern midlife woman. So I want to get into, you know, how this company was founded, how you got the idea, and uh, and really where you're at with the company overall. But just to get us started, we'll start this episode the way that we start them all with our Mission Matters Minute. So, Janice, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Janice, what mission matters to you? Our mission at VNV is really to address, address the fashion needs of the modern midlife woman and provide her a one-stop fashion destination online that's curated to allow her to find modern, on-trend, stylish fashion that fits her lifestyle. And even though this woman is aging and change, her body is changing, there's over 50 million of women over 50 years old who control over 73 billion in clothing expenditures. Yet despite this demographic being having the largest disposable income, they feel invisible and ignored when it comes to fashion choices, taking a back seat to millennials and Gen Z. Here at BNV, we are on a mission to change that and really help this woman feel empowered. Wow. And so uh, I love bringing mission-based individuals on the line to really share, you know, why they're doing what they're doing and really how they're doing it as well, because, so that we can all learn and grow together from uh, from that knowledge. So great to have you on. And I guess, Janice, just get us kicked off. Like, like, how did this journey begin for you as an entrepreneur? Like, where did you start? Well, I I kind of have a long sort of journey. I I started out not really in the entrepreneurial world. I'm actually. I was an art historian, and then I moved into becoming an engineer and lived and basically for the majority of my life worked in the high-tech world designing hardware and then moving into the business side. And after working for Fortune 500 companies and being on the large company side, I got recruited into some startups, and that kind of like moved me in a direction that said, you know, no more of these big companies. The, the building mm-hmm. businesses is way too much fun. And um, mm-hmm. and I've done that for the past, I don't know, 15 years. And I not only have started companies, joined early stage companies, um, I mentor students at Boston University and Harvard, have consulted for startups. But as I've reached my midlife, I've realized that, you know, I I have always worked in startups, but never – something that I'm absolutely passionate about. Yes, I love high tech, but I have so many interests that I really thought that as a second chapter in my life, if you will, I want to try something where I'm really passionate, and I've always loved fashion. And being uh, kind of someone who's changed and and tried several things in my life, I thought, okay, I'm going to try doing a startup in fashion. And I actually started working within the fashion industry and started learning about the fact that women over 50, like myself, were really forgotten and really didn't have a place to go, especially after COVID and they started shopping online quite a bit. Mm. There wasn't a place to go where they could see themselves and see clothing and fashion that was suited for their lifestyle and their changing bodies, things that were happening in their life. And really, we thought this is a this is a hole in the market space. Wow! And, we, and uh, what what a concept! So I, I'm curious to hear hear this. So you're uh, obviously a lot of entrepreneurs, um, executives um, listen to this show, and they're looking for you know some people also have you know ideas of starting a business or doing some type of launch, and maybe they aren't quite there yet. 
Uh, mm-hmm. So you made you made the jump, you know. Obviously, it was some some time ago, and you and you got the entrepreneurial bug, if you will. Um, like, what kind of advice would you give those to the, that are out there that are? And it doesn't have to be in fashion. I just mean in general, like that have that that itch. Like they're like, man, we have all this expertise. We have maybe I have some other things that I want to offer. Um, and but the difference is that you know you went out and did it. What kind of things would you tell people that are considering going on that journey? Um, I think if you're considering on on going down the entrepreneurial journey, I think you really need to understand what it takes to build a business and also do your research regarding your idea for a business. I always say to people that an entrepreneur is not a job. It's a mindset. Mm. And you have to have the mindset of, of understanding of understanding that one, building a business is very difficult. You have to have patience, perseverance, passion. You will have ups and downs that are so high. And if you don't persevere through them all, you you won't be successful. You have to understand what to, you know, what to do in the difficult times and how to pick yourself up. Having a partner is a great thing. I've done companies when I didn't have a partner and I found it a lot more difficult to kind of move forward. You kind of can bounce ideas and and get energy. When one is high, the other one's energy might be low. So having a partner is really good. Um, But one thing before you really start, if you have an idea, it's imperative to not jump into it right away. Doing your research, before we started VNV, we surveyed this demographic. We talked to people. We talked to this demographic as friends of ours. We talked to bloggers and Instagrammers. We figured out and heard from potential customers what the problem was. And then we had to say, okay, what is going to be our value proposition? What's going to be unique to what we build that will be different from the competition out there? So really starting out, you know, knowing knowing that what you want to build really is something that's needed in the market, that is recognized in the market, that has customers and people will pay. If you don't have those things, the idea is, is not really going to fly. And then do the research and talk to your customers and know your competition really well. And, you know, then you can start, at least it's the start of building from there. And then just make sure that, you have that mindset that will help you get through the highs and lows, that will get through failures because you will fail, but you only need to get get things right once. Mm. What do you think, and I don't want to generalize here, but, you know, I, I kind of am, and, and just in your experience, what do you think holds a lot of entrepreneurs you know, back from maybe from succeeding in 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 their in their dream, if you will. Because I know I I mean I interview people all day long, like and daily. We release a lot of different <laughs> a lot of episodes. I talk to a lot of people, and mm-hmm. uh, and I feel like there's certain themes that tend to arise like over and over again in terms of entrepreneurship for those that maybe just feel at the end of the day it's not for them. What do you what do, what's your opinion? Like, what do you think are some of the things that hold people back? I think people have an idea and I deal with a lot of engineers being a mentor at BU and Harvard and a lot of engineers have great ideas technically but they don't they don't always know how to go to market to get customers They, they get stuck on the idea and thinking that this is the right idea if I build it people will come and that that's definitely not true. Marketing and getting out and finding your customers and listening to your customers is one of the most important thing when you're, you're building a business. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think that people with ideas get stuck as to how, how, how to move forward with it. And I think that's why when I mentor students, a lot of them are stuck. And so time goes on and they, and they don't get the advice and the mentoring that they need to say these, this is the direction to move forward and really listen to your customers and get out like, how do they do that? How do, I'm constantly talking to people about getting out to the customers, doing focus groups, how to obtain information as to whether, you know, your idea would be perceived as valuable enough that somebody would change what they're currently doing. So all those kinds of things, I think it's that they, they're not sure how to actually get to the next 
step and grow their business and, and, and you know, expand their idea to, to make it into a company. Mm. Well said. All right. So I want to, even though I can talk to you all day about this, because <laughs> you, uh, in, in your responses, I mean, you've given a bit of a master class, and I feel like we could do entire episodes on a on, on number of the things that you mentioned, but I do want to spend some time in this interview on BNV. Um, so you gave mm-hmm. us a bit of an overview, but let's go deeper. So first off, maybe just start with telling us more about the company, please. Okay. BNV is basically, with in, a, in just a sentence, so maybe to is a curated <laughs> online fashion platform that is targeted at the 50 plus women to discover fashionable on trend clothing that fits their their um lifestyle in their body mm-hmm. and makes them mm-hmm. feel great empowered really gives makes them feel and be the best they can be at any age through the lens of fashion mm-hmm. and so, uh, we the, go ahead. No, no, no. And and basically in in saying that, you know, that's a handful. Actually what is V and V as you go into our our site, we actually have clothing that we have when we say curated, we've tried on every piece. We have made sure that it addresses the pain points mm-hmm. of this of this demographic and we explain why it it's good for this demographic. We style them. We have stylists who show us how to wear the clothing. And we have we've organized the site in an easy um in an easy searchable manner. You're not going to be going through you know scrolling purgatory. It's easy to see what kind of clothing you want. We've organized it by either fitted classic or or oversized. And you can find things that are very different than than in the normal just clothing site that's just blouses, dresses, etc. And we really try to show this woman um, how they can look great despite everything that's going on in their life and their bodies, etc. And they still can be really stylish. These women still want to be look great and feel great. Yeah, that's great. And I, um, I, I have to say, so a lot of different industries that you could go in, um, a lot of different businesses you can start. So first off, you cho- you chose the fashion industry, which isn't necessarily one of the easiest uh, nuts to crack, so to speak. Definitely can be a tricky industry. But then also, um, you know, going after this demographic, like why why is VNV needed like now in the fashion industry? Well, if you look out there, as I mentioned prior, um, you know, COVID. <laughs> I don't want to take advantage of the fact and say it was good. It definitely was not. <laughs> But what yeah, it did course. do to fashion and the fashion industry is it it basically made this demographic who traditionally didn't shop as much online, certainly they did mm-hmm. shop online, but this demographic was used to going to small boutiques, going to stores and buying things. And especially at the beginning, boutiques were closed and store they couldn't go out and shop there. So they've learned very quickly how to shop online and find things or try to find things that they'd like. But when they go online, they see a bunch of 20-year-olds, they see a bunch of crop tops, they see things that are targeted at young bodies. And then for some sites that are that do address this market, a lot of times they have boxy, frumpy clothes. There's, it, it's like this demographic was, is looking for clothing online and they can't find it. And they said that. And they they don't necessarily want to be uh, go and just shop from one brand. They want to see clothing. Not they're not attached to one brand, so they they want to see clothing from multiple brands, which is what D and V is. That really are still stylish and, and age appropriate. And so we felt there's very little out there. If anything, I we are basically the first platform. Yes, there's brands that address this demographic or whose clothing kind of does um, adhere to some of the the pain points, but there's not a multi-brand platform that specifically Mm. addresses this demographic. And a woman can go and see see themselves in these clothing and see some aspirational clothing, see things styled and really see herself in these in in the outfits we style. And um and I think it's very much needed in this industry, in the fashion industry. 
So I know that you uh, you launched in uh, February of this year, and I'm just curious, like, like what kind of response have you received so far? Well, actually, things are going pretty well. Always with with a startup, it's never good enough, and we're constantly mm-hmm. tweaking. But we started the site uh, being being entrepreneurial in nature. We said we've got to get out there. We're going to get out there sooner than later. And you know, it wasn't easy when you have two women who had, did not have a background in fashion, e-commerce, and retail, go to brands and say, can we have you on our site? It wasn't always a, oh, yes, we're dying to work with you. So we felt very fortunate that at the beginning in February, we had seven brands on our site, and, you know, we still have them today, great brands. But we launched with that and then said we've got to get out there and start seeing what our customers' reaction is and get feedback from our customers. And today we have over 20 brands. We are doing adding more brands and more drops on almost an every other week basis. We do our own wow. photo. We now have repeat customers and some loyal customers who are coming back and spreading the word. Um, clearly, we're not we're not to the point where we're saying, okay, it's done. We are constantly learning and constantly changing. We want to kind of do a little bit of a revamp of the site and. We'll always be be improving, but um, but it's really been accepted quite well. People tell us they love our site, they love what we're doing, and and every blogger and Instagram influencer that we talk to has told us that it's it's so needed for this demographic. Ah, that's awesome. Um, I think I think it's just a great story, and I love that you. I love that you say it's. We can't get to the point where we can say it's done. But I was just thinking to myself, is that point ever come? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it ever does. We're never done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think that that the entrepreneurial spirit is the best. Well, Dennis, I just have to say, you know, it has been a, a pleasure having you on the show today. If somebody is listening to this and they want to learn more about VND and to follow the brand, um, what's the best way for them to do that? The best thing is just to go to our site, which is www.shop, S-H-O-P, V-N-V, V like Victor, N like Nancy, V like Victor, dot com. And from there, you can see our, uh, go to our Instagram feed. We have tons of women that we, we also um, show on our Instagram feed and and for inspiration and how we love to see this demographic dress and so on. Please visit us, give us feedback. We love to hear from potential customers and and new customers. And um, we're always listening. That's great. And uh, and uh, for everybody listening, we'll make sure to put uh, that that website and everything in the show notes so you can just click on it and head right on over and. Speaking of the listeners, if this is your first time engaging with Mission Matters or listening to an episode, just to let you know, we're all about bringing out entrepreneurs, executives, and experts and having them share, you know, how they do what they do, why they do it, the mission behind it, um, and really so that we can all learn and grow together. If that's the type of content that sounds interesting or fun or inspiring to you, we welcome you. Hit that subscribe button because we have many more uh, mission-based entrepreneurs just like Janice coming up on the line and we don't want you to miss a thing. Uh, Janice, thank you again for coming on and it really has been a pleasure wishing you much more continued success. Thank you. It's been a pleasure for me as well.